much for joining us. Lots to talk about. Let's try and keep it as uh, brief uh, and to the point as we can. Let's start with those protests, if I may. Uh, the PM dismissing them as subverted by thuggery. What do you think? Um, well, I don't think that the word dismissing is probably um, uh, one, one to, to, to draw on at this moment, that the protests reflect how incredibly angry people feel about what we've seen in America and the killing of a black man by the police in such a shocking way. And, you know, you know I'm, I'm shocked that anger is absolutely understandable. Uh, the particular concern that the Prime Minister's expressed is that you know, absolutely people have a democratic right to protest. That's an important thing in this country. Have um, these protests been subverted by thuggery, in your opinion? Well, it is really worrying that there was violence at the protests and that we had police who were injured and property that was damaged. Um, and that you know, detracted from really important point that was being made by protesters. The other thing, of course, is it comes at a moment when we're in the midst of a pandemic and actually we are getting coronavirus under control and it is worrying um, to see, see you know, protests and people not socially distancing. Okay. Uh, 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 in this context. Let me ask you about that, because um, interestingly, ethnic minorities are fined disproportionately for breaking lockdown rules. Are you saying that ethnic minorities are more likely to break lockdown rules? Uh, I'm not saying that at all. So no. why are they more likely to be fined? Um, I, 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 I can't it's answer the exact questions as to why not who has received fines and but what i can say but the, dis that well, the question i mean it's a fact i'm sorry to interrupt you mr Whitley, but it is a yeah. fact that ethnic minorities are fined disproportionately more for breaking lockdown why is that um so as you say it's a fact but what i was just saying on the protest is that what we did see is large numbers of people um and it was you no know, people for, who have Black and Asian and ethnic minority communities, also uh, those of white ethnicity, coming together in large numbers and not always managing to socially distance. But that this was is before a risk. the protest. I say that as a, as a, this as was a before the protest. The latest figures were before the protest. Those have been going on for a week or so. This disproportionate uh, number of uh, bl um, eth um, ethnic minorities, BAME, uh, being uh, prosecuted or fined for breaking lockdown rules was before that. Um, so one of the things that, um, as you, if you've heard the Prime Minister's statement yesterday evening, you've heard, is that he said, actually, you know, we have to look into anywhere where we have injustices and discrimination in our society. I can't say whether that is the case with the uh, fact that you've made for fines. I mean, it's very recent information that, that you're sharing. But I will say that as a health minister, it is really, really important that people follow um, the, the, the lockdown rules and do socially distance um, okay. and, and do avoid doing things which put us all at greater risk from okay. coronavirus. Particularly, as we say, that where we've seen, and this is you know, one of the awful... Got it. We've got it. We've got it. I just want to go on to your brief, if I may. We only have a limited time. I want to go on to your brief. The Office for National okay. Statistics publishes the weekly mortality rates today. What do you expect them to be? Um, I'm not going to guess about what figures are going to come out from the ONS. I don't get to see them in advance. But what we... You're hoping seeing, they'll be lower, obviously. I am indeed hoping that they will be lower. We are really seeing that coronavirus is in retreat, that we are getting it under control in this country. Okay. That deaths are much lower now than they were at the peak. And so this is a much better position we're in now than we were in a few weeks, a few weeks ago. OK. Uh, people under 60 who have died with underlying health conditions in the United Kingdom out of the 45, 50,000, 60,000, depending on which figures you're looking at. According to fact, full fact check, people under 60 who've died with no underlying health conditions, 253 people. Now, every one of those is a tragedy. Every one of those leaves behind a grieving family. But how do you justify locking down the country against those figures? So, at every point in the pandemic, we have taken the advice from scientists and the government has made decisions to do the right thing at the right time. Um, so there was a point uh, back in uh, February, March time when people were calling for uh, lockdown to be imposed earlier. Um, we listened to the guidance from the scientists and we imposed lockdown at the right time 
to minimize uh, the um, uh, loss of life and to protect the NHS. Because if you'll remember, we saw those scenes in Italy where you saw hospitals and you saw intensive care units completely overwhelmed. And we didn't want that to happen. In so we based country. our strategy on what was happening in Italy? No, as I said, I was just reflecting the context at the time. And as you'll know, we take advice from scientists and we have the SAGE group that meets and brings together and there's a debate between different scientists who have different views. And, and the scientists said you needed to be right really careful about what was happening in care homes. 57% of deaths from COVID-19 have been in care homes. You got it wrong as far as care homes were concerned. Discharging elderly people from hospital into care homes without being tested. You accept that you got that wrong. So, you, um, I mean, that, so, so care homes are particularly part of my ministerial responsibility and something that I have worked so hard on um, with, along with the care providers themselves and local authorities since the pandemic hit, worked incredibly hard to protect people who are living in care homes who we know are most at risk. And what I should say is the majority of care homes in this country have not had outbreaks. Nearly 60% have not had outbreaks. 57% of deaths have been in care homes. Um, as I said, so many care homes have been able to stop, prevent themselves from having outbreaks altogether. And there are others who have had to cope with outbreaks, but have managed to bring it under control. Every death is um, one that is, fills me with sadness because that's somebody, you know, somebody who has family, who have sons or daughters, siblings. There is a loss to their community. I, 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 I hate the fact um, that this has hit care homes so hard. But what I say is, it's really important to recognise that right now, outbreaks are under control. Not the um, point. The, Not the, the point. Are... Not my question at all. Not my question at all. Uh, we didn't know that diabetes. Um, um, we didn't know that being from an ethnic minority community uh, made you more susceptible to COVID to start with. We did know from the get-go that the elderly were more susceptible. Why did we not wrap them in cotton wool and allow younger people to go out and do their job? Again, people under 60 who've died with no underlying health conditions, 253. So actually, from very early on, there was guidance, for instance, about restricting visitors to care homes, about the infection control that should be carried out in care homes, recognising the people in those settings, as you've just said, would be at greater risk. And as we learn more about the virus and we have updated um, those infection control guidance, we've taken more steps. We've done the social care action plan. We've done You're being economical action. with the actuality there, Minister. A letter sent to care providers from NHS England and the government on the 19th of March aimed to free up hospital capacity, ordered the safe and rapid discharge of those people who no longer need to be in a hospital bed. The new default will be to discharge home today without testing. So what you describe um, is... Uh, the, the, the steps that are taken, which was a clinical judgment about what would be in the clinical interests of people. It was policy. It wasn't charge. clinical judgment. It was policy. Uh, so, and as I said, at all points in this, we follow the scientific guidance. Of and then you make the, the right policy. You do. take their advice and you make the policy. You can't stick this on the scientists. Well, well, I can, because I, I mean, I'm not... You I'm can't not, stick sorry. it on the scientists. No, 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 that's not what I mean to say. You just what said that. Say, <laughs> Yeah, you just I, said, I can stick this on the scientists, no, and no, you can or you can't. To be clear, that is your words. That is your words. No, you okay. said that's you not, can. No, I said, can not, you, no, you can't stick this on the scientists, yeah. and you said you can. I didn't which put that in your mind. You said it. Which is why I immediately said, what I mean to say is we have taken the scientific advice at every stage of this process. We've taken the scientific advice, and then the judgment is made about what is the right decision to take. But I will also say, I know because I've been doing the job at every point, trying to do everything we can for those in care homes because we know that they're at greater risk. And I think, and I would also say, I think care providers have done a really important, a really difficult job. They know that. after their residents. They know that. Many of them have died really doing that job. I just want to ask you before we go, because we're out of time. Um, yesterday, we introduced quarantine here in the United Kingdom. 14 days uh, when you come in, uh, you have to self-isolate. How many uh, people uh, were quarantined yesterday? Um, I don't have the data that you're asking for. Why not? 
because because I'm 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 a health minister with oversight of, of care homes and the NHS workforce. What I can confirm to you is, as you will know, that there is a policy of quarantining uh, arrivals in this country, and the reason we're doing it is because it is so important for us to keep the infection. And given rate that it's down. so important, you should know how many people have been quarantined. Why don't you know? Well, what is important actually is that we're doing the right thing to keep infection rates down. In the country. But you so don't know how effective it's been because you don't know how many people you've quarantined. I'm sorry, on, Minister, come on, you can't come on the show without knowing the facts. Uh, uh, well, I'm answering your questions and the important thing is that we're doing the policies on quarantine as on many, many things to try on the one hand to keep people safe, to make sure that the NHS is able to cope, to reduce the risk because we don't want to have, we really don't want to have a second wave of the virus. And okay. we want to be able to open up the economy and get people back to work and get things working again, because that's good for everybody's livelihoods and for everyone's mental and physical health. And it's okay. a really important balance for us to, to take between, on the one hand, reducing the risk, keeping the infection rate down, on the other hand, opening up the economy, enabling people to be at work. OK, Minister, we must let you go. I know you've got lots of other interviews to do this morning. We appreciate you taking the time. Thank you. Thank you. Let's bring in Joe Pike standing by for...